Well, stocks closed higher for the day after a strong final couple of hours of trading. The Dow was down as much as 600 points at one point, but closed at 260 in the green. Ah, for more on the economy and what this volatility means, we go to Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Pacific Capital. Hello, Peter. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. So, I, you know, I'm a little dizzy from the roller coaster, I think. Uh, yesterday, a uh, thousand point gain. A uh, record for the Dow in one day. Today, with an, um, an hour and 45 minutes to go, the market, uh, the Dow is down over 600 points and it finishes up in that hour 45, uh, picks up over 800 points and finishes up 260. What on earth has been going on in the past 24 hours? Well, this is uh, the type of action that you normally see in bear markets, and we are in a bear market. You know, we had the longest bull market in U.S. history just come to an end, and it's you know doesn't die uh, easily. Uh, uh, you know, so you're seeing uh, a lot of volatility, and you know these big up moves, which are typical again in bear markets, are designed to keep the hope alive, so that people don't sell, and uh, you know you sucker in a few more buyers because they think the bottom is in, and then the next thing you know, the market's Trading for new lows. I think this bear market has a long way to go. We're still much closer to the top than the bottom. And the worst part is not really the bear market, but the economy, which is headed for a worse recession than the one that we now call the Great Recession that we had in 08 and 09. Well, what's changed except the, the fact that the market is cyclical and after X amount of years, usually around this time period, things change. But what, what changed from the time Donald Trump was elected, almost the night after or the day after, until really the month of October and now accelerated here in the month of December? What changed so rapidly in October? Well, the only thing that's changed is the bubble has popped. Uh, when Donald Trump was elected, there was a gigantic bubble, and it got bigger for the first, uh, you know, couple of years, or not quite two, that he was president. And, but now the bubble's popped, and the air is going to come out, and we're going to finish the financial crisis that we started in, in 2008. I mean, people keep thinking about, has anything changed? The, the, the economy has been lousy the entire time. All the problems that, that resulted in the 08 financial crisis have been made worse since that crisis by the very institution, the Federal Reserve, that created the problem in the first place. They created the financial crisis by inflating a housing bubble, by keeping interest rates too low for too long. Well, this time they kept them even lower, even longer. They inflated a far bigger bubble than the one that popped in 08. And now that this one is popped, it's going to be followed uh, by a worse crisis and a worse recession. And people have to uh, understand this and prepare for it. All right, so, so you're predicting uh, the, the, the worst possible scenario to, to a great extent. Extent. Let me ask you this. We had news today that the White House is considering a, uh, a ban, an executive order, a ban on Chinese tel uh, telecom equipment made by uh, Huawei and ZTE. And this on the heels of uh, year-end numbers that, that put Huawei in second place in the global mobile phone sales um, behind uh, Apple. Uh, so first, uh, how can Trump do this without greatly affecting American companies? But on the other hand, doesn't he need to do this because of the security threat posed by those two companies? Well, I don't think so. And I think, you know, the president likes to try to blame others for the problems. And I think he's going to be doing a lot more of that as the situation unfolds. I think he's playing with fire when it comes to China. He doesn't understand the degree to which the Chinese are helping to prop up our bubble economy. You know, they are one of our biggest lenders. They buy a lot of U.S. debt and to enable our bubble. They supply us with all sorts of merchandise uh, that we depend on. And now we're, you know, leveling taxes on American consumers who buy that merchandise. But really, they have no alternatives. I mean, we don't produce the stuff ourselves anymore. Uh, contrary to what Trump has been saying, there is no renaissance in the U.S. manufacturing uh, sector. Uh, manufacturing is as weak as ever. Our trade deficits are bigger than ever. Our budget deficits are bigger than ever. And so this is not the time to be biting the hands that feed us. But I think, you know, ultimately, Trump is going to have to focus on much bigger problems because, again, he's been, uh, you know, basically hanging his hat on the fact that he claims that we have a booming stock market and a booming economy. Well, the stock market boom has gone bust, and the economic boom is going to bust next, and right. then, you know, the president's going to have a real hard time. All right, Peter, uh, definitely the bearish uh, point of view. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate it.